the humble toaster pastry. It's been our molten, tongue-burning, sweet little friend since the 60s. It's a quick little pick-me-up when we need a tasty treat. Sometimes it's breakfast on the run, and in all the world, one little toaster named Milton reigns supreme with his empire of handheld, sugary rectangles known as Pop-Tarts. In this episode of the Dandy Funhouse, we're going to give three off-brand toaster pastry underdogs a chance to dethrone the mighty Milton and claim the title Toaster Pastry Champion of the World, for this is the Strawberry Toaster Pastry Showdown. Let's step into the Funhouse! The Dandy Funhouse. Hello and welcome to the Dandy Funhouse video show, podcast, and blog. This is where we cook up the very tastiest in retro pop culture, toys and games, and all the fun stuff. I'm your host, Neil Dandy, and by pop tartular demand, this episode is going to cook. And yes, I'm coming to you straight from the Dandy Funhouse Studios kitchens, where today we're gonna have the showdown of the century. I have here before me the four most popular toaster pastries in America. All right, they're the only four different types of toaster pastries I could find after visiting four different grocery stores, but you get the idea, right? Okay, here we go. Upon conducting my search, scouring grocery store shelves, for toaster pastries to pit against one another, I discovered that strawberry is apparently the most common flavor amongst all toaster pastries. So that's the flavor we're going to test today. Now, here we have Millville Toaster Tarts, which is the Aldi brand. We have Toaster Treats, which is the Kroger brand. We have Frosted Strawberry Toaster Pastries by Great Value, which is the Walmart brand. And last but certainly not least, we have the reigning toaster pastry champion of the world, Pop-Tarts. Now, I want to be real careful to not rip off Matt Mitchell's Bless Your Rank, which I absolutely love. So instead of lining up these four contenders to the Strawberry Toaster Pastry Throne, I'm instead going to conduct this contest like a boxing match with an undercard and a main event, after which I will pit the winner of the undercard against the winner of the main event to give the underdog a shot at the title. I will be judging on packaging, the look of the pastry, the smell of the pastry, and of course, how they taste both untoasted and toasted. I will not actually be swallowing any of these toxic treats here. I, I'll be taking a bite from the best corner of the pastry, chewing it, allowing it to roll around my palate for a moment, and then spitting it out while swishing my mouth with water between bites. I feel this is the most fair method of conducting this contest, and you deserve no less than the best. Now, I think we can all agree that Pop-Tarts is the 900-pound gorilla in the room as far as worldwide popularity, followed most likely by Great Value, the Walmart brand. And that's going to leave Millville Toaster Tarts and Kroger's Frosted Toaster Treats as our undercard. <laughs> you guys ready? <laughs> Come on. Let's get ready to crumble! Okay, here before me, we have our undercard match. We have Millville Toaster Tarts from Aldi, and we have Frosted Toaster Treats from Kroger. Looking at the packaging, they both have pretty good packaging, I must say. I'm not crazy about the Millville logo. It doesn't sound very appetizing, but then again, neither does Kroger to me. So I'm going to give it a tie on the packaging. Let's uh, crack them open and see what we got. Here's Millville Toaster Tarts. Foil, very basic foil. Unwrap it here. Toss the foil over there. And the frosting, you can see there's a lot of edge exposed, but that, you know, you might have to have that edge exposed. It seems to be rather thick, so that's a good sign. 
Uh, the other pastry in the package has even less frosting on it. So I'm gonna take the best one here and um, tell you what, uncook. Not bad, not exactly bursting with flavor. The uh, look of the coloring, it's not bright red like I would expect. But um, I guess it wouldn't be fair to toast one with a corner chewed off of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in my toaster here. <coughs> Spit out and swish. Kroger Frosted Toaster Treats. I would say the, uh, wait, wait a minute. The foil design is absolutely identical. Is the toaster pastry going to be identical as well? I'm starting to get suspicious here. They look almost exactly identical, except this one has some, uh, the Kroger brand has some blue greenish sprinkles on it, which the Millville Aldi brand does not. Let's find the best of the two toaster treats. This one's kind of cracked a little bit. Well, yeah. I taste absolutely no difference between the two, but while I swish my mouth around, let's go ahead and toast these babies. I've got my toaster set at about almost up to three, which is like the 10 o'clock position, which is normally where I like my toaster pastries. Let's go ahead and uh, get it cranking here. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Let me swish my mouth while that's going here. Now the first standalone electric toaster was called the Eclipse. And it was made by a company in 1893 called Crompton and Company of Chelmsford, Essex. It had bare wires toasting the bread. Now, back then, the technology wasn't really there to have the wires last, at least not any length of time. And the wires would burn up really fast and the toaster would be junk in a very short amount of time. Now, the problem of the heating elements was solved in 1905 by a young engineer named Albert Marsh, who designed an alloy of nickel and chromium, which came to be known as nichrome. The automatic pop-up toaster, which ejects the toast after toasting, well, it was first patented by Charles Streit in 1921. In 1925, using a redesigned version of Streit's toaster, the Waters Genter Company introduced the Model 1A1 Toastmaster, the first automatic pop-up household toaster that could brown bread on both sides simultaneously set the heating element on a timer and eject the toast when finished now these guys ought to be ejecting here any moment now and here we go now i tasted millville first and kroger second so uh let's be fair here and try the kroger toasted first Grab it with some foil so I don't burn myself. Woo, 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 woo. See if I can grab this without killing myself here. All right. Kroger toaster treats, frosted toaster treats. Yummy! Yeah. Once again, not exactly bursting with flavor, but when it's toasted, it it's it's nice. It's real nice. All right, 
Millville toaster tarts. See if I can do this without any foil on my hand since it's had a second. I'll bite the side with the most frosting. I got to tell you, this is really, really close. They are identical on their inner packaging. I'd be willing to bet that they're made by the exact same company. <laughs> and uh, But the Kroger brand has some an extra color of sprinkles on it. And I kind of think that I got a little more flavor off the Kroger brand. So while, even though it's very, very close, folks... I'm going to have to give the undercard match to Frosted Toaster Treats. Which brings us to our main event. The champion, the reigning supreme heavyweight in all the world, without a question, without a doubt, Pop-Tarts. So we're going to start there. And uh, the competitor who wants Pop-Tarts crown is great value frosted strawberry toaster pastries. Wait, okay, first let's look at the packaging. I, I mean, come on guys. <laughs> they, they put almost no thought and no design whatsoever into the great value brand. Okay. I, there's no question that pop tarts has the better branding and better packaging here. So advantage pop tarts. We're going to open it up. We're going to look at the inner foil here. There's design, the Pop-Tarts logo on there, and it's blue. Whereas the inner foil for the Great Value brand, let's have a look. And the Great Value brand has the exact same foil design as both competitors from our undercard. So generic is as generic does. I wouldn't be surprised if this tasted absolutely no different than any of our undercard competitors. But we're going to give it a shot. So I'm going to start here with the untoasted test with the great value. Give that the first shot. And opening up the great value, I'm seeing some weird brown stuff right here in the grooves. And a little disturbed by that. There's like, it, it, it's like it got burnt a little bit on the assembly line. But, and the front of it, exactly the same as the Kroger brand. Same sprinkles, same everything, but it's kind of, kind of, mushed up it looks like something happened to it yeah same here something weird happened to the frosting here but give it a taste it looks and tastes absolutely no different than any of our undercard competitors Now, what about Pop-Tarts? Can Pop-Tarts live up to its legend? And look at this. Uh, for those of you listening to the podcast, um, the Pop-Tarts brand looks exactly the same as the generic undercards. Uh, maybe a little difference in um, most of these have little holes in them for to help with toasting. Um, this the Pop Tarts brand seems to have more holes. It's not as thick on the edges, but it's got the exact same kind of sprinkles it looks like, and it seems to be frosted really terribly. There's like almost no quality control on that frosting. Look, it's all the way to the edge on one part. It's definitely over the edge on, on that part. I mean, come on, come on, Kellogg's. Mm. I'll say the inside filling is is red. The others were kind of like a dingy red. This is more a bright red, but honestly, that's probably from some kind of weird chemical that you really shouldn't be ingesting. <laughs> Couldn't be ingesting any of this. And I'm not. I'm squishing my mouth between bites. 
but I've got to be fair. Want to create value? I seem to be tasting a slight, very slight bit more sweetness from the Pop-Tart. And it's very slight, almost indistinguishable. So for the untoasted, I got to give it to Pop-Tarts. Swish. Let's try toasting it. I can't really give you a lot of history on the Great Value brand because it's a generic brand. So all I can really talk about here is Pop-Tarts. In the early 1960s, Post Cereals invented a process for dehydrating food and enclosing it in foil. It was originally supposed to be for dog food. They eventually adapted the process to produce the first toaster pastry in the world. It was called Country Squares. Now, Post's biggest competitor, Kellogg's, they wasted no time jumping on this toaster pastry bandwagon and introduced their own toaster pastries called Fruit Scones that very same year. The name was soon changed to Pop-Tarts as a nod to the pop art craze of the time. Now, Pop-Tarts became so popular that the initial run sold out in just two weeks, and Kellogg's had to run apologetic advertising for the empty store shelves, and this only increased the Pop-Tart fever across the nation. And of course, Post Cereals was left with their jaws on the floor and warehouses full of country squares wondering what the heck just happened. Now, Frosted Pop-Tarts didn't debut until 1967. Milton the Toaster, the brand's mascot, debuted in 1971 and was voiced by an actor named William Schallert, who was best known as the dad on the Patty Duke show. Milton the Toaster was one of the few cartoon jobs that Schallert had. His main talent was the ability to time his voiceovers perfectly and work quickly to save time and money in the production room. Now, as of 2024, there are over 20 Pop-Tart flavors, including Hot Fudge, Sundae, S'mores, Raspberry, and Grape. Dandy fun fact! Did you know that if you leave a strawberry Pop-Tart in your toaster for too long, it can burst into flames? And it can go up to a foot and a half high. That's right, the fire! Fire! Now, this very situation happened in 1992 when Kellogg's was sued for damages after a guy's Pop-Tart got stuck in the toaster and caught on fire. Since then, Pop-Tarts carry the warning, due to possible risk of fire, never leave your toasting appliance or microwave unattended. At least that is what um, Wikipedia said. I'm going to see, now I'm going to let these cool off for just a second. I'm going to see if I can actually find that warning on the Pop-Tart box. Ingredients, uh, I got a couple different languages here. Oh, look, uh, four ways to try. Straight from the foil, which we have tried. Toasted, which we're about to try. Stacked, which means I guess you put two of them together. And frozen, I have never eaten a frozen toaster pastry before. If you have, let me know in the comments. Okay, um, I'm not seeing that. I'm see oh yeah, but caution, tiny, tiny type. Very tiny type, apparently just uh, for the lawyers. If pastry is overheated, frosty filling can become extremely hot and could cause burns. Due to possible risk of fire, never leave appliance unattended when in use. Okay, well, it's it's there. It's not very big, but the warning's certainly there. Okay, well, let's try these, okay? I think we should give great value frosted strawberry toaster pastry since it is the least known, the the least popular in the nation, give that first shot here. Bite from the most frosted side I can. Not exactly bursting with flavor. I'd have to say that's even less flavorful than either of our undercard competitors.
let's try the pop tart and it kind of toasted up all funky really weird uh, it's got see, it's all burned up up there and i'm not i'm not impressed pop tarts not impressed i've got filling oozing out of the holes it seems kind of thin and Seems to have a tiny bit more flavor than uh, the Great Value brand. Great Value. Pop hearts. And a spit. Okay, the pop tart looks like a train wreck happened to it, like someone ran over it with the with a something I don't know with a locomotive or something. I'd say the great value looks a little better, but that's about all it's got going on. Hardly any difference in taste. The packaging for pop tarts is much better. I've got to go the nod to pop tarts. Our main event winner is pop tarts, and that brings us to our final showdown, which is going to be Kroger Frosted Toaster Treats against the Mighty Pop-Tarts for Toaster Pastry Champion of the World. Okay, back to basics. Packaging. Both of them are pretty darn good on the front. The back of the Kroger is pretty much the same as, as the front almost. The back of Pop-Tarts, they put a little more effort into it. Gave you some fun stuff to look at, some fun things to ponder. Instructions on the back. Or was that the side? Okay, on the side, here's some instructions on the side. Much nicer presented. Um, you know what? Uh, Pop-Tarts has the better packaging. There's no doubt about that. Well, let's try them head to head. Of course, we know the inside foil is very generic on the Kroger brand here, the toaster treats. Going to... Well, these kind of look... These Kroger toaster treats look... This one looks like it got ran over. And this one looks like it's frosted okay. Not really out to the edges, but let's uh, try the most frosted side of the Kroger brand while we put the other one into the toaster but we're not going to toast it just yet we're going to toast both at the same time now is there an advantage to trying one out of the toaster earlier than the other I'm not really sure but I do know my spit cup is really filling up over here Okay, let's try Pop-Tarts. Better inside packaging. We've already determined that. So advantage on the uh, on the packaging overall goes to Pop-Tarts. Do these look any better? The inside, the, the actual product, it, it doesn't look good. It just doesn't. Look at it. These things look look worked. They they look like look like somebody else somebody's already chewed these things up and spit them out. But let's be fair here, and, and they're thinner. Look, look, these things are thinner. I don't know if you can if that really comes across on camera, but I mean, they, they really look like somebody ran over these things with a truck. But I'm gonna try it. Very thin, not nearly as much filling as the Kroger brand. And really not much taste. Um, I'm going to give advantage Kroger brand on the amount of filling, the quality of the appearance, and the thickness of the product uh, in the cold stage. So right now we're kind of one to one. Now let's start our toaster here. Oh, I got some splash back on that.
Who will it be? This is for all the toast. Who will it be? The world champion Pop-Tarts or the scrappy underdog Kroger Frosted Toaster Treats? It can only be one, folks. Wonder if this goes from a timer or heat. Oh, a little smoke came up there. Did we get a Bernie here? All right, two toasted toaster pastries. They both want to be world champion, but it can only be one. It can only be one by one. Ow! Ow! <laughs> I've had my fingers burned by both. Let's give it a second here. Okay. Kroger brand. There's a corner off that. Let's be fair, tear a corner off each. Pop tarts. Okay. Kroger frosted toaster treats. The filling on this one is bright red and very attractive, actually. Hmm. You know, it can vary from package to package, I guess. Okay. The Kroger Frosted Toaster Treats, it's good. It's not exactly bursting with flavor, though. This looks, the filling looks exactly the same color on the inside. Nicely toasted. It, it looks horrible, though. It doesn't look appetizing, but I'm gonna try it here. What? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. And it's not Pop-Tarts. Our winner of the Toaster Pastry Championship of the World is none other than Kroger Frosted Toaster Treats. <laughs> And that's going to about cook our toaster pastries for today, everybody. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me at the Dandy Fun House here. And if you would like to help me afford to pay for the cleanup of all this, <laughs> go check out dandyfunhouse.com and visit the patronage page. Supporters will get access to exclusive bonus footage. And super supporters will get access to that exact same bonus feature features i would say plus i'll mail you something amazing from right here at the dandy fun house and it won't be a glass full of spit up toaster pastries i promise it'll be better than that <laughs> and five star reviews anywhere you can leave them get my undying gratitude if you're a podcast listener and your podcast app supports it usually there's a little button on there with a little dollar sign click that and make a little donation uh, it always it helps every little bit helps and it's always appreciated but that's not why i'm here that's not why i'm doing this i'm doing this because i love doing the show and uh i'd love to show you some more awesome stuff just come on back next month and i put out short videos on the various social media platforms throughout the month as well which you can enjoy on the platform of your choice you know all the big ones you can find me i'm not that hard to hunt down everybody anyway i'm gonna get the pastry on out of here you guys thanks for coming to the dandy fun house and hanging out with me right here where everything is fun and dandy
A lot of you moms don't know there's a lot of good inside Kellogg's Pop-Tarts toaster pastries. There is? Sure. First of all, there are six Pop-Tarts inside. Six? That's good. And there's real fruit filling inside, plus a tasty pastry crust. Hey, that's good, Milton. And six vitamins and iron. Well, now, that's very good. <laughs> you see? For snacks or as part of a good breakfast, it's good to know there's a lot of good inside Kellogg's Pop-Tarts.